If you're new to exercising, maybe you have aches, pains, and injuries, tightness, or maybe you used to work out and you haven't in a really long time, then getting started can be challenging. But the good news is, today, I'm gonna share with you five beginner moves that you can do from the comfort of your own home, and all you need is a chair. Hey there, I'm Coach Tyler from We Shape, where our goal is to teach you how to move your body better so that you feel better in your body. So before we jump into these five beginner moves to help you really feel good in your body, I want you to remember that these moves are not meant to be done like other workouts tell you to do these workouts. It's not about pumping your muscles and going fast and getting as much done as possible. Instead, what I really want you to focus on is mindfully moving. So not mindlessly exercising. Instead, we focus on mindfully moving. So pay close attention to the cues I'm gonna share with you about how to do each move with perfect form. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna put it together and show you how to do a follow along version of this workout to make your body feel amazing while also feeling safe the entire time. The first beginner movement we're gonna to cover today is the sit to stand. And this is exactly like it sounds. I'm gonna teach you how to stand up from a chair and sit back down, but with perfect form. And this is one of the most fundamental movements that you should plan on keeping for as long as possible. So pay close attention to these form cues because they will make this feel significantly better. We're gonna take our feet slightly wider than hip width with our toes slightly turned outward. Now, as you look down, pay close attention to which direction your knees are pointing relative to your toes. If your knees are caved in like this, but your toes are pointing out as you do this movement, you're gonna have knee pain, it's gonna put pressure on your knees. Instead, look down and make sure that your knee is pointing the same direction as your toes the entire time. From there, a lot of people when they stand up from a chair, they shift their weight forward like this onto their toes and they jerk their body forward and they try to extend through the knees. They're trying to do this motion of extending through the knees when what we really wanna do is this motion of extending through the hips. By transferring this movement to the bigger joints rather than the smaller joints, we end up having a whole lot less knee pain and making our body feel a whole lot better. So instead of shifting the body weight forward like this and coming up on your toes, we wanna find our foot position and we wanna push the weight into the heels, okay? So about 70% of the weight should be on the heels. From there, bow forward from the hips, but keep a nice long spine. Another thing people do is they start to round their back as they're coming forward. So don't do that. Shoulders back and down, nice arch in the lower back and keep a nice long spine. From there, if you need to, you can put your hands on your knees for support, drive your heels into the ground, and then focus on extending the hips. You can see I'm, my knees are going straight, but my hips are gonna drive the motion to a vertical position, okay? So making sure that you're really slowly and controlled, learning how to do this motion the right way, and then, once you can, lifting your arms up like this and doing it without using your hands for support. The breathing pattern is real simple. Before we stand up, we inhale, we bring our hands out front, we drive into the heels, we exhale as we extend our hips to the top, and then we slowly come back down to the start position, touch our butt, and repeat the sit to stand just like this. Pay close attention to your posture and your spine position, your knee position, and the weight on your heels and the breathing pattern. And this will be a fantastic movement for strengthening your lower body. Okay, this second movement is called the supported hip hinge. And it's another fundamental movement of the human body that you should maintain for as long as possible because ultimately a hip hinge is your body's ability to hinge the hips with a nice neutral spine so you can pick stuff up off the floor. But most people need to practice this movement and often need a little extra support. So what you're gonna do is same thing, start with a nice wide stance with your toes pointed outward like this. And as you start to bend forward through the hips, what I want you to think about is instead of bringing your chest forward, try to think about pushing your butt backwards. That motion will put the weight on your heels and load the hips rather than loading the knees and the lower back. So it looks like this. Push the butt back, soft bend to the knees. If you need to, you have a chair in front of you for support. Hinge as far as you can. You can keep the soft bend of the knees, but come as far down as you can without rounding your back. The moment you start to go, whoop, that's the moment you went past your actual range of motion, past your ability to be flexible in this position. So once you start to feel your body want to round forward, pause. Now from here, pay close attention, squeeze your butt muscles, and extend your hips to bring you back to the start position. This should be done slow and controlled while you start to build awareness of what it feels like to squeeze your glute muscles to extend the hips. Now here's a special trick for you. If you can't seem to squeeze your glute muscles as you're hinged forward, try this. Imagine that you're trying to turn your feet outward. You're trying to turn your feet this direction like that. You're not actually gonna move them. You're just gonna press them into the ground and turn them outward. In this position, if you start to do that, you'll feel muscles on the outsides of your hips start to fire. 
Keep that tension as you extend the hips all the way, and you'll notice this automatically forces you to fire your glute muscles and create more stability in the hips, which is what we want when we're doing this motion. Now, just like the squat, we're gonna inhale as we go down, exhale as we go up, and we're gonna repeat this motion slow and controlled, focusing on those form cues. Weight on the heels, pushing the butt back, nice flat spine, inhaling down, exhaling up, and squeezing the glutes. Okay, this next move is an upper body move, and it's gonna strengthen all the muscles of your upper body, and you're gonna use a chair like we just did before, and I wanna make sure you have a nice sturdy chair, so make sure you're able to push forward on your chair, lean into it. If it doesn't feel sturdy, go to a different surface, like a countertop, the top of a dresser, or another piece of furniture that feels nice and sturdy for you. Now, the higher the furniture is, the easier this will be. The lower the furniture is, the harder this will be. So if it feels a little bit difficult or you can't seem to do it with good form, just elevate the furniture level and it'll make it easier. And if this is still too difficult, what you can do is come over to a wall and actually practice this motion on a wall as well, which will make it significantly easier for you. Remember, it's about form, not about intensity. It's about connecting with your body and learning how to move, not exercising mindlessly and torturing yourself trying to change your body, okay? So what we're gonna do is this. Start with our hands on the chair like this and grab the back of the chair. From this position, I'm gonna walk my feet back until I have a nice straight line in my spine from the tailbone all the way through the top of my head. In this position, I'm gonna squeeze my glutes, those same muscles we just squeezed in the last movement, and I'm gonna press my hands into the chair. So a lot of people, when they're holding this, they're gonna lift their arms up like this. I want you to create tension this way, and you should feel it in your core and these muscles underneath your armpits right here. That's gonna make sure that your shoulders are protected and that you strengthen your core a lot more. It's also gonna make it a lot more challenging. Okay, so glutes, press your hands down, and then as we do the push-up, we're gonna drop the elbows towards the ribs, go as far down as we can comfortably, and then back up. Elbows down towards the ribs, inhaling down, and then press as we come back up like this, okay? Now, a couple things to focus on here. Don't let the elbows flare out. If we flare the elbows out, then we start to impinge on our shoulders because we have to internally rotate to go all the way down. When we bring the elbows down, we have plenty of flexibility in our shoulders and it protects the shoulder joint. Another thing, don't just place your hands on here passively, squeeze the chair actively, which will help you strengthen your hands and wrists at the same time. Otherwise, focus on those primary form cues of squeezing the glutes, pressing your hands down, and squeezing your hands, dropping the elbows towards the ribs, inhaling down, exhaling up, and you'll have good form on the high chair push-up. This next move is called the one arm side bend. So you're gonna start this one in a standing position and you're gonna point your toes straight forward and make sure your feet are right underneath your hips. From there, one hand goes on your hip and as you bring the other arm overhead, don't let this shoulder roll forward like this, okay? So bring the elbow back and pull the shoulder blade down. Now, the palm stays towards the front as you do the side bend. I don't want you to turn your palm away from you or turn your palm towards you like this. I want your palm to stay towards the front to make sure your shoulders back and down in a good position. You're gonna reach that arm over the head, you're gonna push against this hip and stretch all the way from here, all the way up your spine. And you're gonna slowly come from side to side like this, going only as far as you feel comfortable. Now, a couple thoughts on this one. Try to imagine you're between two walls. I don't want you twisting like this and moving your body around like this. Instead, we wanna stay between two walls as we're moving our body from side to side. Another really important cue is this. A lot of people tend to think about just collapsing towards the ground. If we do this, our rib kind of punches into our hip and we're, de we're compressing the spine rather than lengthening the spine. So what we wanna do here is we wanna think about reaching the ribs toward the sky rather than reaching these ribs towards the ground. That's gonna help us create length as we go side to side in this one arm side bend. If you need to also, you can inhale as you go down and exhale as you come up, squeezing the core muscles to initiate that motion. That way you protect your lower back as you stretch and strengthen your spine. Okay, this last move is a core move that you'll do on the floor, on the couch, or in your bed. Now, why I say couch or in your bed is a lot of people have a hard time laying down on their back on the floor and then being able to get back up again. So if that's a problem, please feel free to sit down on the couch, swing your legs over and lay down on the couch to do this movement, or sit down on the edge of your bed, swing your legs over into your bed to do this movement to make sure that it's not disturbing any areas of your body that are challenged when you go to stand up from the floor like this. Now from there, there's a really important point, and that is, can we keep our lower back pushed into the ground the entire time? 
So before you even start this motion, press your lower back into the ground. You can even feel if you can get your fingertips underneath your lower back. If your lower back lifts up like this and creates space underneath the lower back at all during this movement, then you shouldn't be going down that far. So keep the lower back pushing the ground. You can put a pillow under your neck, whatever feels comfortable for your neck, you can hold it up like this, it doesn't really matter. From there, I want you to drive your fingertips away from your ears and then turn your palms toward the sky and press the backs of the hands against the ground. Now, lift one knee up, the other knee up, and hold this position from your pelvis all the way to your head as you lower your heels down to the ground slowly and then back up and squeeze your knees towards your chest. Now what you'll feel is as you lower your heels, your lower back's gonna wanna lift up. So if that's happening, then just lower one leg at a time and just do this in an alternating fashion like this. If you're able to do it, where your heels are tapping the ground all the way back up, and you think you can do 10 or so repetitions while that lower back's still pushing the ground, well, all you have to do to make it harder is extend the legs a little bit, and that's gonna make it significantly more challenging. Otherwise, what you really wanna keep focused on is, are your fingertips down away from your ears, backs of hands pushed into the ground, lower back pushing the ground, nice tall posture, and are you breathing in as you go down and exhaling as you come up, just like that. Okay, now that you know these five amazing moves that you can do from the comfort of your own home to help you connect with and care for your body, how do you put it together into a simple home workout? Our suggestion is to do 40 seconds of each movement followed by 20 seconds of rest. Do them in the order that I just showed you, starting at the first one and ending at the last one. Then repeat this for two more rounds for a total of three rounds. Now this workout will take you about 15 minutes, but it will help you develop strength, flexibility, balance, and coordination across your entire body, which will help you feel significantly better in your body. And if for any reason you want us to build you a personalized at-home workout, well, that's exactly what we do at WeShape. We build personalized follow-along workouts for our members where every movement is selected for you based on your goals and your capabilities. We teach you how to do those movements with perfect form and also how to connect with your body from a place of self-care rather than self-judgment. If you'd like to try WeShape, all you have to do is go to weshape.com backslash no food rules, all one word. Or you can click the link in the additional resources below. Thanks for watching.